One Piece. <laughs> this is One, one. Piece. <laughs> this is One Piece chapter 1058, New Emperors. We have a new little cover page story here where uh, Caesar Clown is begging for the Vin Smokes to get him the fuck out of there, um, which good for him getting out of there pretty much. I, I'm sure they're going to take him. Uh, and that's probably not going to lead to anything good because Caesar is a scientist and he will be joining a science kingdom for the most part scientifically runs and he's clearly a bad character oh yeah and he's not a good man (laughs) that that much is sure um we open this chapter pretty much just on the seas the crew has just left wano so we're officially out after three years four years it feels like forever years uh and uh we're set sail on a new adventure uh nami is in the middle of chastising luffy for dropping them off of the falls uh, Jinbei is getting used to this little routine. So much, uh, Nami is so pissed that she actually seems to be like emitting conquerors hockey. And I don't know how seriously to take that. Uh, <laughs> I wonder how all I was wondering, like, damn, how y'all gonna feel about this? Because I'm not gonna take it serious. No, I'm not either. But I, th- I think it would, you know, because there's like a running gag that like Nami has conquerors, and it's the only reason she's able to. That's it, right? Like hurt Luffy is that she's using armament this whole time. Uh. Which oh, wow. I think that would be a pretty cool payoff, but you know we all saw it coming. If that's the case, um, pretty sure this is just a joke. I know, but I wouldn't but mind. You you won't believe how many people are running with this shit. I bet. You know, I bet. So if you were like, Oof, fucking fucking, I'm here as conquerors, hockey bro. You bro. You conquer. <laughs> you fucking converge it. You know you what's funny? It. You know what's really funny? There's this interview uh, Oda did. He and the creator of um, of Kate's Closed got interviewed together. And Oda was talking about YouTube theories. Uh, he talked about him before, and he was like, "I try not to watch him because I don't want him to influence, you know, my my writing." But there's this in this interview most recently. He was like, "I kind of feel bad for them because sometimes I end up destroying their theories by doing the complete opposite." And uh, I uh, I try. I, I'm sorry. <laughs> like it's not on purpose. Yeah, it's so always says. Yeah, he's like, "My bad, dude." <laughs> uh. But, yeah, in any case, yeah, Nami's pissed. You know, everybody's, like, you know, being the straw hats. Zoro's asleep. Uh, Frankie's actually bragging. He's like, did you see how that, how the Sonny fucking took this fall? He tanked it? I'm proud of it. You know, it's kind of nice. It's kind of sweet. A little moment for Frankie, Mm -hmm. being proud of his creation. Uh, And uh, Robin receives the newspaper, and uh, we get some new bounties for the rest of the crew. Uh... I think um, Chopper's only had a 900 berry increase, you know? So I think he was at 100 yeah. before, so now he's at 1,000. Um, Nami has reached 366 million berries. Uh, I love her reaction. It's it's very Nami and very funny. Uh, where she's like, nine digits? Can I collect? <laughs> it's like, you're going to turn yourself in for your own bounty? Uh, right, like, how, how's that going to work? <laughs> Yeah, uh, Brooke got 383 million berries. Frankie got 394 million berries. However, his wanted poster is the mast of the Thousand Sunny, uh, which I think Mm -hmm. is funny considering, like, in the good future, Oda has stated that Frankie becomes a ship in general. So (laughs) He uh, says that out of his mouth? There's, like, you know, sometimes in these, like, little um, question and answer things he puts in volumes... He draws out like you know what were the warlords? What did the warlords look like when they were kids? Uh, what would they be looking like if they were gender swapped? And uh, he did one where he drew the straw hats like twenty years uh, apart, so like at forty and at sixty in timelines where they either succeeded and they failed their dreams. Um, so in in the good timeline, Frankie at the age of seventy or eighty becomes a battleship himself. Like, he is a ship. Um, just straight up. Just straight up a ship. Uh, but it is very... No funny. face? Yeah. I think that his face is the mast, but he is a ship. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny. I, you're obviously not supposed to take these very seriously, uh, some of them, but... Um, He's going to be Pluton. He's going to turn oh into Oh, my it. God. That would be so crazy. Confirmed. Confirmed. Neckbeard confirmed. <laughs> Usopp. God Usopp 
has 500 million berries. His eyes are bolting out of his eyes. Like, no, stop. Stop increasing my bounty. Uh, Robin you has... can't believe it. Uh, Robin has received the 930 million berries. Uh, mm. Pretty cool. Pretty good for Robin. Uh, and then we get the top four from there on. We have Blackleg Sanji at 1.32 billion berries. Uh, Jinbei at 1.1 billion berries. And Zoro at 1.101 billion berries. So that places Sanji firmly in fourth place. Uh, amongst the bounties of the crew uh <laughs> which is funny because like he was over zoro when he entered wano like he had a higher bounty than zoro when he entered wano and left fourth place um pretty good but to be fair jimbe is a warlord you know he's pretty strong so he already had a reputation from before so it just bounced off um and that's the last we see of the sea of the straw hats for a while because then we cut over to empty bluffs island in the new world where uh buggy's uh uh delivery service thing headquarters is uh, and we find out exactly how the cross uh guild came to be uh we open with buggy just crying he- like just a crying head being held by crocodile and mihawk is sitting right behind him and uh, he's like, please don't fucking kill me, man. I don't, please don't do it. And Crocodile's just pissed because, you know, Buggy's getting pretty much the credit for the cross guild idea. Um, and they're just basically like, we're going to kill you now. And he's like, please don't. And Hawkeye's literally like, that's not an option. I'm going to have to kill you. Um, mean- You're going to die by my soul board right now. Soul right board. here. <laughs> um, yeah, and... Buggy's entire crew has abandoned him immediately. Um, you know, uh, Mr. Three is immediately like, thanks for taking me under your wing again, crocodile. Uh, the rest of Buggy's actual crew that he started with is like, poor chairman, rip. <laughs> you know, he's, <laughs> he's sick. completely let go. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's like, what do we do now? He's like, we follow crocodile. It's a cold world out there. Um, <laughs> I fucking love this shit. Um, but then we get the, the kind of origin of how this all came together, uh, on Gloom Island where, uh, Mihawk likes to hang out, uh, because he's fucking edge as hell. Um, <laughs> uh, he's packing up right now because this is around the time where the seven warlords were abolished. So he's just packing his shit so he can leave. Uh, Crocodile is calling on him on the phone and be like, Hey, if you're going to, if you're going to leave anyway and go on the run, why don't you join my side? You know, with our name and value combined, the Navy, the Navy will have to sit up and take notice. I mean, you were a naval hunter once upon a time, which is interesting. Oh, which, which some is, spicy lore. Yeah, which is interesting considering that they partially deal in the bountying of naval officers right now. Uh, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and, uh, yeah, Mihawk was once a naval hunter. Zoro was once a pirate hunter. Interesting uh, dichotomy there. Uh, mm. I think that's interesting there. And now they both... Were, well, he doesn't work for the Navy anymore, but he did. Who? Mihawk? No. So, yeah, well, he was a naval hunter, then worked for the Navy as a warlord, right? No. Mihawk yeah, was, he was a warlord. Navy, no, no Mihawk, huh? was, Mihawk was always a pirate. He was no, a so naval warlord. warlords, though. Warlords. They work for the for the for the, for the marines, right? Yeah, no, but basically they're, they're for not, the world government. They're not marines. What they do is like the warlords were like given kind of free reign to like within reason do whatever they wanted, as long as they when the government called them, they came to their aid. So they were yeah, mercenaries. So they, they work for them. They we're not uh, saying that they're marines. We're just saying that they're they work for them. But that is a good distinction to make because it's like, because my combat, what I was going to try to say is that, oh, Zoro used to hunt pirates and now he works for a pirate. It's similar to Mihawk, like how he now works with who he used to hunt. But it's, you're right, it's not, he's not really working under them. Yeah. They, they do their own thing until it's ready to, like, they order them to go kill somebody. Yeah. The thing is that, the thing I got from it is that at some point there were like these pirates that had uh, emperor potential. That the uh, world government was like, well, 
how about we make a deal? How about, you know, we give you relative free free reign to, you know, do what you do. But yeah, yeah, you work for us, kind of, offhand. Um, you know, so I guess it was just like trying to govern pirates through these sh- super strong pirates, you know. Um, which I, I think is, I guess, a interesting strategy, even though it it, ter- it worked terribly for the world for the world government, because half of them were just straight up trying to ki- like take over countries and take yeah, the one doing the absolute most. Yeah. Um, but yeah, uh, we then cut over to when the Marines started to surround Buggy, uh, and Buggy was commanding his people to fight the Navy. But then it turns out Crocodile was already there. He pulled up. Uh, and he's there specifically to collect on the money that Buggy owed him, apparently, uh, which is pretty damn funny because uh, I guess Buggy was only able to start this business he has with a supreme investment from Crocodile, and he's never paid Crocodile back. Uh, the so- small business loan? <laughs> yeah, a small loan of $1 million. <laughs> yeah, he got the better. You mean 1 million berries. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right, Brian. <laughs> I had to do it canonically. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, Crocodile pulled up to Buggy, apparently, and he's like, he's just like, where's my money, bitch? <laughs> and uh, Cro- Buggy bitch just said, I have my money. Yeah, Buggy basically <laughs> says, I-, I don't have it right now, but I'll work off my debt if you let me, Uh, you know. Uh, advertising, design, printing, distribution, we do it all. You can use our services for free if you want. Um, but then it turns out that the flyer, uh, put Buggy at the top of the fucking, you know, as the headliner of the Cross Guild. Um, and apparently against Buggy's wishes as well, uh, he, he had the flyer made by his henchmen, but his henchmen worship him so much that they just naturally put Buggy's face in the center uh, and Buggy's like, why the fuck did you do that? Print another one. And he's like, too late. We already distributed it to every market across the world. So, every market. Yeah. Uh, I love this. <laughs> uh, it's I really love this uh, little moment. Um, but then we also cut to the Marines uh, talking shit about the Cross Guild. Um, and they got the story wrong, obviously. They're, they're framing it as... Um, that buggy that they were like building a buggy as this like big big time pirate as usual you know has been going on that's how buggy even got a warlord's promotion in the first place uh you know off of his uh cred of uh sailing with roger and uh stood shoulder to shoulder with the emperor red hair um he can and he's like he commands so much respect that even crocodile rushed his aid at empty bluffs island um so we that's some hyperbole. Yeah, that's some that's some uh, severe hyperbole. <laughs> uh, so we actually get a bounty upgrade on Crocodile and Mihawk. Uh, Crocodile, based on his logia powers and intelligence and leadership, he's got one point nine six five nine hundred sixty five billion berries to his name, and Mihawk, being a former war lord of the sea, uh, with a greater score, sword skill than uh, Red Hair the Emperor. And as the strongest swordsman in the world, he has a worth of 3.59 billion berries. Uh, goddamn. And of course, there's Buggy the Genius Gesture. On top of his prior feats, he has the power to command those two other men. He's at 3.189 billion berries. Uh, so now mm-hmm. he's a warlord of the sea. Um, and uh, yeah, that's not that doesn't sit well with Crocodile necessarily. Um, but then, you know, Hawkeye takes a second. He's like, eh, you know, maybe that's a good thing that he has the emperor title. I don't, I don't personally particularly want to be an emperor. I'd prefer the quiet life. Uh, so, you know, maybe we just like let him take all this shit. And if he becomes inconvenient, we'll just kill him. <laughs> and Crocodile's like, true, true. <laughs> <laughs> we could easily dispatch Buggy the Clown. Uh, so easily, yeah. Which I think is gonna fucking bite him in the ass. Oh later. yes. Oh my god. I can't wait for whatever comedy of errors that Buggy is living in. Is. They're destined to lose. Oh my god. I just. Oh my gosh. So they come out and you know they rouse the people. 
uh, as their chief officers. Uh, Crocodile and Mihawk look confidently, and they're like, hmm, yes, our army. Bucky is crying. He's, he actually asks himself in his head, where is my life taking me? <laughs> oh, man. Where he begged for this. Yeah. Um, meanwhile, uh, we go to the Kamabaka kingdom, queendom on the Grand Line, of course. Uh, Eva's country, where uh, all of the revolutionaries seem to have set a ba- uh, base camp. Uh, I I feel like this was established, but, you know, it, either way, it doesn't matter. Uh, it makes sense. So, mm-hmm. they're all based there. Sabo is not there, though. The other revolutionaries that have been to the Reverie have seemed to have returned to Kamabaka Kingdom with Dragon and Eva. Um, Sabo is not with them. Uh, but, yeah, they're basically all, you know, talking amongst themselves. Uh Dragon himself says, uh, believes that Sabo is fine, but if it's true that he killed King Cobra, there will be a reckoning between them, no matter what his reason is. Uh, so Dragon doesn't seem to be very happy that Sabo killed, supposedly killed King Cobra. And it turns um, out... Oh, sorry. Has Dragon spoken before? Yes, he's spoken. Are these his first words? No, he's spoken, but it's never... He, he doesn't speak often. Is this his first substantial sent like like statement like this is no you said paragraph he's he said stuff but he said stuff he before? is he is for sure a man of very few words he doesn't speak often and when he does it's it's kind of short because he's still a very mysterious character in the world so uh, I feel like Oda is very careful with you know the words that he says at any given time uh, but. Uh, it is now later revealed that uh, apparently Kuma is also in Kamabaka Island. They were able to get him on there. And um, Dragon commands Kuma to tell him what exactly that he has seen. And Kuma says, as you command. bear. And he's very sad. Yeah, it is very sad. Um, yeah. But then the phone starts he's to a ring. Slave. Uh, yeah. But then the phone starts to ring. And uh, the Navy is actually intercepting this fucking call. Um, and he's like, it might be the Flame Emperor. Recorded and traced the signal. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, the chapter ends with Koala picking up the phone. And on the other side, it's Sabo on the phone. And my goodness. My God. Uh, the. The Flame Emperor. It's him. Uh, fire guy fire, fire monarch fire man uh that's the end of the chapter josh what did you think about this chapter i liked it <laughs> it was it was cool seeing the whole crew together and uh, the interaction with um with jim bay was very uh very necessary very needed it's nice to see him on the crew acting like a weird or like the rest of them um what i thought was really interesting was that jimbe had a higher bounty than um sanji yeah i think it makes sense i mean do you think jimbe could whoop sanji's ass yes maybe jimbe has like more of a history as a pirate it's one of the reasons i believe it oh he's yeah, he's been in the game for a minute. And he was a warlord at a time. Makes sense. Um, I believe they're kind of close together, you know, in terms of bounty. Yeah, they're they're not, like, that far apart. They're still, they're both in the billions. Um, if, like, Jinbei is one point, one billion, one hundred million. Sanji is uh, one billion, thirty-two million. So it's not that crazy. Um... But pretty cool. Um, what else did you have? Yeah, it's only a slight difference. Um, hmm. I don't really have any other big thoughts, to be honest. How about you, Brian? Anything stuck out to you? Um, I thought it was interesting that Sabo didn't... Uh, not Sabo, but Dragon didn't immediately like say that Sabo wouldn't do this. He's just skeptical he's like oh well if he, if he did this shit then there's trouble that that's trouble but he didn't immediately say nah Sabo wouldn't do this shit he ain't that type of guy so 
It's right. weird that Oda is leaving that up in the air. So we'll we'll see what happens next week. I'm excited. This is my RGC, by the way. What? Certified RGC. Certified RGC. Certified RGC. I thought it was just really cool to see Jimbei kind of, like Josh said, kind of being a little, a little, a little weirdo along with the straw hats. It was kind of heartwarming. It's like all this time finally paid off. Yeah, I agree. Um, I guess I got into my thoughts. Uh, are you done, Brian? Yeah. Um, I I really like this chapter a lot. Um, I feel like it's the most One Piece chapter I've had in a long time, I feel. Um, where, you know, there was like a good amount of little character moments and, you know, like world building and, uh, it was, it was a really fun read top to bottom. Uh, this is, did feel like the first time in a long time that the Straw Hats got to like bounce off of each other and, uh, you know, just have, you know, just like be themselves, be the Straw Hats that we know and love, uh, throughout the series and have these moments together. Uh, it feels like it's been a long time and, you know, they've been a apart for a long time uh they haven't been like together in a room just not fighting for like a, a while so it was cool to see them just chilling on the ship uh the buggy stuff i buggy is so fucking great for this series um i do uh enjoy how like oda was like i'm gonna put a stop to all these theories about buggy being some big king shit <laughs> he's just getting yeah, ramshackled I here i honestly would have never seen him being that way yeah i i, like, I it just doesn't it. make sense yeah uh but yeah it was just so funny and it's so good to see crocodile again after so long forget how much of a fucking boss he is <laughs> he's just been out there in the world getting money <laughs> and just investing money into other pirates operations uh i respect yeah him. yeah it's kind of consistent with how he ran baroque works where it was like a literal like it was a company you know there was like a weird uh, business model to it, which uh, I appreciated. Um, the minus the subjugation of Alabasta. Yeah, minus that. I mean, you know, you know, <laughs> you know. <laughs> of course, <laughs> you know. That's what I mean. I'm just saying it's consistent for Crocodile, is all. <laughs> um, yeah, I... no, he's a mobster. He gets that money. For sure. You know that. You see them suits. Them shits ain't cheap. Sheesh. He's you gotta got have a proper. <laughs> you gotta have a proper business model. This guy's always got like a fucking hundred dollar cigar. He had a hundred cigar. Is that expensive? Is it? Yeah. I mean, I don't know how much an expensive cigar is, but it's more than a hundred dollars for sure. Yeah. That's like I, a and really why don't you check smoke. that out, Brian? Yeah, Brian. How much is a really numbers. good quality cigar? Because you know, Crocodile doesn't take any less. Even when he was an Impel Down. He had like a two hundred and fifty dollar cigar in his mouth. Uh, That's crazy. It's so funny. Like it's one of those things that you don't realize. It's like, why does he have a cigar in prison? <laughs> it never seems to go out. Um, but yeah, that that stuff is great, and I love him bouncing off of like Crocodile and, and Mihawk, and I'm so excited to see where this leads. Uh, what else? The stuff with the revolutionaries was interesting. It was good to see them. Every time we see them, it, it has big implications for the world, I guess. Um, I'm hoping Sabo's name gets cleared in the eyes of Dragon. It would be shitty to see them have a falling out. But uh, I think it makes sense for Dragon to have like a healthy amount of skepticism within himself. You know, he is a revolutionary. <laughs> um, but I think in particular, like he's very... He takes exception to King Cobra as opposed to other kings because he is he, his people was never like celestial dragon uh, oppressor <laughs> fucking asshole. So I feel like he saw King Cobra as like, man, that was like an example of a good ruler and Sabo killed the wrong one, dude. <laughs> uh, if there was one to kill, he did the wrong one, man. All right. Um, but I'm excited to see where it goes, especially, uh, seeing Dragon's history with Alabasta, actually. I feel like that would be very important down the line. Um, but yeah, I, I really like this chapter. I, this whole time I've just been like, is this my RGC? I really don't know. Uh, cause there is another chapter that really like, 
I was just like, this is so good. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I me mean, no. It's tough. It's it's really hard. This was my runner up. Yeah, if there's if I don't choose it, it's either this or the other one. All right, you know what? I feel like I feel like it's the other one for me. All right, it's so. This. But this was very close. I want you all to know it was right here. <laughs> I, I was like right here with it, but yeah, those were my thoughts. Um, did you, uh, did you guys have any rebuttals? Anything else you wanted to say? Uh -huh. Um, it was the world's most expensive cigar is a million dollars. God, what does it What's do? What's in it? Diamonds? <laughs> you am I going to be smoking diamonds? <laughs> <laughs> Dude. He's smoking some diamond dust. Sheesh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. Oh, my God. No, for real, though. What is it? Like, what, what is, is it? Made what does it, it say? I know it what's is? in it? Yeah, no, what, what does yeah. it say it is? I mean, yeah, nah, come on. There's got to be something. Dollars. Let's, let's go. The cigar's filter is one of the rarest, coming from the secluded corners of the Himalayas. <sighs> is then watered by filtered Fiji water. Or filtered by Fiji water, I guess, is what they're trying to say. <laughs> and then mm -hmm. it and then it's rolled by a masterful cigar roller. That's a job you could have. <laughs> oh. oh shit! <laughs> what is he? A fucking black cigar is also bedazzled with five carats of diamond. <laughs> I knew it. God damn! Yeah, he's smoking diamond dust. Jeez, Louise! Wow. What do you do? You need to keep the diamonds after you smoke it, like. All this obviously like they don't burn them, right? I'm not gonna smoke the diamonds. Why would you all I think this it's, why would you do that? Maybe? I don't know. All this just to give someone mouth cancer. <laughs> it's not good. Mm -hmm. Man. This fucking when the, this when the process is all completed, it's delivered to you by the by a white gloved uh delivery person. <laughs> by a messenger a white gloved messenger. The, whoever this white gloved messenger is, he does not have a good life. <laughs> <laughs> the suffering has to be included in this. <laughs> they don't get they don't get a happy person to get you this. <laughs> Somebody has to wake up early, put on a suit and tie and white gloves to deliver a small box. <laughs> it might be an interesting job. Maybe. It pays well enough. Yeah. You might Yeah. Jeez. I mean, I guess it pays a lot. Some of that million dollars has to go to this person. No, that person gets paid like seven dollars an hour. There's no way. <laughs> There's no way like even a fraction of that million goes to this white gloved delivery person. But I'm here for it. It's good to know. Uh all right. Any other rebuttals? <laughs> Dragon's gonna beat Sabo's ass. Yeah. I'll give it a I don't think Sabo did it. He's no, evil. Obviously he that's, a, that's it. He's evil. <laughs> He's evil. His fangs are gonna actually be black. Yeah. <laughs> or blue or something. Or something you know? like that. He's it's blue. It's blue. The flame. Are they actually blue? No. Oh. No. Yeah, they'll be blue. <laughs> All right. <laughs>